And when it comes to his followers, he promises to take care of them. Now today I want to talk to you about one of his promises in particular. In Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 25, Jesus tells his followers not to be anxious about their lives. He says there's no need to worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear because God will take care of all of these things for you. He knows exactly what you need and he promises to fulfill those things for you. However, I don't expect you to take my word for it, so let's go to the Bible and read the passage for ourselves. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So, it must be true because it's in the Bible, right? If you're a Christian, you have no need to worry about things like food and clothes. But then what about me? I'm an atheist, and yet I have more food than I could ever eat. I have more clothes than I'll ever wear. I got everything I need, most of the things that I want, but God's promise is not for me because I don't believe in him. So why do I have these things? Maybe it's just a fluke. I consider myself to be lucky. But let's not worry about how good some of us atheists have it. I want to talk about Christians today because this promise that Jesus made is for Christians. Take a look at this map. This depicts the Christian population. As you can see, the darker the shade of blue, the higher percentage of the population is comprised of Christians. Now, take a look at this map. This is a map of world hunger. The areas in green show the concentration of population that is undernourished. The darker the green, the higher the levels of malnourishment for that country. Now let's compare the two maps. Does anything look strange to you? The following images from these Christian nations show people who are seeking the kingdom of God. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones who hear me love, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Promises in an ancient book don't mean a whole lot if they're not being fulfilled, because empty promises don't fill empty bellies. I wanted to take a few days to make this video. There were a lot of Christians and people alike pointing to 717 as the day that there would be some rapture. Now listen, there is going to be no rapture ever. You ain't going anywhere. 717, all that was was David in Hebrew. Look it up. David in Hebrew it looks like a 717. You people were fooled again. Jeffrey, I like subtlety. <sighs> sure you do. Well, what did you have in mind then? How about some prophecies? A lot of religions do prophecies, God. So I'll make mine really impressive. Step 3A, really impressive prophecies. Like what? Check it out. There will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be earthquakes and famines in various places. There will be mockers and scoffers following their own desires. And? And what? That's supposed to mean something? Yeah, it's an accurate prediction of the future. Wars and rumors of war is a prediction? Please point to a time when there was world peace. Uh... There's always wars and rumors of wars, so predicting that doesn't prove anything. Okay, but the Earthquakes one. You gotta admit, the Earthquakes one is pretty good. Huh, I thought you were omniscient. I am. Then why does the USGS seem to know more than you, God? According to them, there are several million earthquakes every single year, and the rate of large earthquakes remains steady. So anybody, on any given day, can say, there will be earthquakes, and they will be right. So I suppose, since you know everything, you figured that predicting there will be famines would be a remarkable prediction because famines are so rare. Right. <laughs> Wrong. All you'd have to do is crack open something like an Encyclopedia Britannica to know that, quote, famines, like wars and epidemics, have occurred from ancient times, achieving biblical proportions not only in biblical times, but throughout history. So, predicting that there will be famines means exactly Jack diddly squat god and what was that last prophecy you said 
Um, th there, there will be mockers and scoffers. Ah, yes, the way. dreaded mockers. Because who would dare mock a fantastic story, right, God? Do me a favor and take a look at this picture of Jesus as he was being crucified. Uh, okay. You see that sign they put over his head? Yeah. What's it say? Um. Go on. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. They even put a crown of thorns on his head in purple robes to signify royalty. They were mocking Jesus while they crucified him. Hell, you have bears mauling 42 youths for mocking Elijah long before this prophecy. So not only were there mockers from the very beginning, but you actually acknowledge them. You honestly think it would be a meaningful prediction to say that there will be mockers when there always have been mockers all along? Um, well, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. So that prophecy is worthless too. Prophecies. Psh. You're supposed to be the most intelligent being of all time, and this is the best you can do? Scrolls? Vague prophecies of things that have always happened all the time? Who would think this is evidence of something? If anything, they just think it's some false prophet being intentionally vague so he can't be proven wrong, because he'll always have some war, famine, earthquake, or mocker to point to. Trust me, God, nobody's gonna be so astoundingly gullible that they would fall for such an obvious ploy. Ah, shit. <laughs> Well, here we are. It's idiot day. The day of the idiots. They all look right about now, washing their asses off, or at least some of them, putting on their best goddamn outfits, at least some of them. They're going to get in their nice cars, at least some of them, and they're going to ride to the church with their little kids in the back seat to be told how worthless they are without Jesus in their life. They'll send their kids up to the altar so they can screw the Holy Ghost into them. God damn, I'll tell you, you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost no more than I have. And I've been doing it since I was six or seven years old. And here I am. But you know what's funny? When I was a kid, these motherfuckers, you know how they are, these Christians, especially back, back in those days, uh... Every time they'd want to talk to me about what's in that fucking Bible, I just couldn't, you know, goddamn, I read the three little bears, the goddamn little pigs, uh, the girl and the pea under the mattress. I can't remember the names of these fucking nursery rhymes, fairy tales. But for the most part, they all end it well, you know, there wasn't no brutality in it. And then when these Christians would be telling us about this fairy tale, the Bible, I'd have to question it because it was just fucking gross. I mean, how the fuck do you teach that to people as being a true story? How do you know it's true? Well, the Bible says so. Well, goddamn. Uh, the Mother Goose story says there was three bears living in the woods. Uh, a fucking cow jumped over the moon. The lady with all the kids living in a goddamn shoe. That's a book, too, and it says some shit. And we know a cow didn't jump over the goddamn moon. We know there wasn't three bears living in a goddamn log cabin in the wood and uh, Goldilocks came and ate their goddamn porridge. We know there wasn't a big bad wolf that huffed and puffed and blew the little piggy's house down. So, what makes that story true? Oh, goddamn, uh, you're going to go to hell if you don't change your ways. Telling this to a kid, you're going to hell. Why? Because I'm... Forty years younger than you, and uh, you won't ask yourself those same fucking questions? You know, goddamn, I, I've only been around for a little while, you know, and when you tell me this shit, it just sounds so fucking ridiculous to me. And you're telling me that I'm going to be tortured in the fucking fires of hell for eternity. And most of them, uh, I was the one kid that they thought that uh, I probably wouldn't make it to 20. But here I am, 60 goddamn years later. And it's always been that we're in the last days. We're in the last days. I've been hearing that shit for, uh, what? 60-something fucking years. And goddamn, here we still are. Goddamn, what do they mean, the last days? I mean, because it's been uh, quite a fucking few has passed since I was just a kid. And people older than me, a few more had passed. And they've been telling them the same goddamn thing. And here we are. The fuck's wrong with people telling people that? Because, you know, I mean, you get people when they're young kids, like this guy commented on one of my videos yesterday. But I, w I was raised as a child. I know, but goddamn, eventually you got to grow up. 
You can't be a child all your goddamn life. You have to think. Think. I think there's more likelihood that there's people living on other goddamn planets somewhere than I do that there's one invisible motherfucker in the sky sitting high with his angels watching the fucking, uh, the fucking disgusting goddamn shit that goes on with supposedly his goddamn creation and does nothing but twiddle his goddamn invisible thumbs. You're not a goddamn child anymore. And I was a child thinking about the same shit that I'm talking about now. Some people just <laughs> refuses to goddamn think. Not me. Goddamn, you ain't gonna piss down my back and tell me it's fucking raining. Well, I gotta go prepare to go to church so I can go praise Jesus, the one and only who's watching us all at once. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Events that are supposed to happen, maybe two of them will actually happen. <laughs> you can't predict anything. You mean to go to church and pray to God and Lord Jesus Christ, all of whom are dead. Waking up isn't the easiest thing to do, but uh, people you're going to wake up and start waking up harder and quicker. They're wanting to play God. They actually think that uh, the spider's going to drop. I'm going to come out, you know, arrow. Just look around and say, hmm, and then jump back in another body and have another life. Uh, it ain't happening. This is it. There's all kinds of stuff that's going to change. But basically what it is, is you're going to become aware. Some people are going to stay in the dark. That's fine.